now food prices are at an all-time high. Look at what happened in the American Southwest and is happening in the American Southwest right now with this persistent drought. Look at what's happening to the evergreen trees in the American West. Does it matter that these beautiful trees are being destroyed by causes that are directly linked to climate? Don't you and your children have a right to be able to enjoy that
they have spent enormous amounts of money and, and they have succeeded in many countries in paralyzing the political process. There are four anti-climate lobbyists on Capitol Hill in this city for every single member of the House and every single member of the Senate. You know, I was a big fan of Michael Jordan when he played basketball. But I'm telling you, if he had been guarded every step he took on the court by four defenders and every one of his teammates was also guarded by four defenders, he wouldn't have scored all those points and his team wouldn't have won all those games. So what is the answer for this? It has to come from you. It has to come at the grassroots level. It has to come from young people. And I believe that you are up to it and that you can do it. We are seeing, at the same time that governments have been paralyzed around the world, with some exceptions, this, one, this country unfortunately is not one of the exceptions yet, but we're going to change that after you get busy and get out there at the grassroots level. But at the same time governments have been paralyzed, we are seeing at the grassroots level a fantastic growing movement and we're also seeing some responses with renewable energy and efficiency and conservation. Photovoltaic energy, for example, is just a couple of years away from being competitive with the average price that is charged for electricity on the grid right now. You remember what happened. Wind power, for each of the last three years, wind power has been the largest source of new electricity generation in this country. Efficiency, a lot, a lot of businesses are finding that they can make money and be more profitable while saving all of that CO2 pollution and saving money by reducing the wasteful uh, practices that lead to it. But we need to change the laws. We need to put a price on carbon. We need to have policies that encourage us in the right direction. You know, if something is out of sight, it's often out of mind. CO2 is invisible, tasteless, and odorless. And if it has no price tag, it's going to be routinely ignored. And that's what's going on right now. So it's important to change the light bulbs and, and to change the windows, but it's far more important to change the laws and the policies. And that requires political action. It requires passion. It requires advocacy. It requires you with your hearts and your heads and your voices being raised. You know, I mentioned before that this pollution that's being put up there, a lot of it's going to stay there for a long time, longer than we can imagine. And so it, it falls to us in this day and time to make the changes that will stop this destructive practice. But short-term thinking is part of the problem that we have to solve. And yes, it's complex, but think for a minute about what, what triggered the Great Recession that we're trying to uh, come out of now around the world and with some limited success. They gave all these mortgages to people who could not possibly pay them back. Now, when I was when I was first in the workforce, I signed a mortgage and I looked at the banker and I gave proof of what I could pay uh, and asked, answered questions and all that, but they changed all that. And they started giving all these thousands and millions of mortgages to people who couldn't pay them. And they said, okay, it's all right if we lump them together and sell them into the global marketplace. And they convinced themselves that that was all right because they were making a lot of short-term profits. But when the bill came due and those mortgages were tested to see whether they were any good or not, they began to fail and it was a chain reaction and we had the credit crisis and the Great Recession. Well, it's the same thing now because we've got trillions of dollars of subprime carbon assets whose value depends on the assumption that it's perfectly all right to put these 90 million tons of pollution into the atmosphere every 24 hours. It's not all right. And it's not all right to borrow all the money from China to buy the oil from Saudi Arabia dominated global oil markets and then burn it in ways that destroy our future. We need to change every bit of that. And we need to create
create the new jobs in renewable energy. Ladies and gentlemen, young people gathered here from all over our country. It is hard to summon the moral imagination to fully grasp how crucial it is for you to get moving even more than you already have. I want to personally thank the young people here who have shown my slideshow out there, the ones with Inconvenient Youth, the ones with the Repower Program and the Alliance for Climate Protection. Thank you. I want to thank the young people with the other organizations that are represented here. But I want to issue a challenge. We have not yet done enough. Our leaders have not yet done enough. Our country has not yet done enough. The world has not yet done enough. We can solve this, and we can create a better world. I remember when I was a boy of 13, and I heard a president of that era 40 years, almost exactly 40 years ago, he, almost exactly 50 years ago, sorry, when President John F. Kennedy issued that challenge to put a man on the moon and bring him back safely within 10 years. And I was inspired by that. But I heard a lot of adults in that era say that that's impossible. It was unwise to make that challenge. But eight years and two months later, Neil Armstrong set foot on the surface of the moon. And the moment, the moment he did so at NASA's mission control in Houston, Texas, there was a great cheer that went up. And the average age of those systems engineers that day at NASA was 26, which means that their average age when they heard that challenge was 18. To, today's young people can and must meet this challenge. Some of you know the old African proverb that if you want to go quickly, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. We've got to go far quickly which means we've got to get our act together. And let's start it right here in this meeting. Let's start it today in Washington, D.C. Let's start this movement and get it into high gear. Make no mistake, the day will come when your children are your age, depending upon the circumstances in which they find themselves. They will look back at us in this day and time, and they will ask one of two questions. If they look around them and they see a world with rising sea levels and salted soils and hundreds of millions of climate refugees destabilizing governments around the world, the failure of sustainable agriculture in these developing countries, if they see the tropical diseases moving away from the equator in both directions, if they see the deeper droughts that have been projected, if they see the increased floods, if they see the political chaos that is created, if they see rising temperatures, if they see the North Polar ice cap melted and gone in the summer months and accelerated melting in Greenland and Antarctica, they would be justified in looking back at us in our time and asking of us, what were you doing back in 2011? What were you doing when your leader said, make me do it? And the coal companies and oil companies were trying to make them do the exact opposite. What were you thinking? Didn't you hear the scientists? Didn't you see what was at stake? What were you watching Dancing with the Stars? What was the deal? But if your children, at your age today, look around them and see that they live in a world with a sense of renewal and tens of millions of new jobs, building solar panels and windmills and making our industry more efficient, building sustainable agriculture and sustainable forestry and making our whole society renewed and, and efficient. If they have hope in their hearts, and if they feel that their future is going to get steadily better, then I want them to look back and ask of us, how did you find 
the moral courage to stand up to the carbon companies, to stand up to the deniers, to tell the truth in a forceful enough way to bring about political change. And part of the answer will be this meeting in Washington, D.C. The answer will be you. You must be the change. You've got everything it, it takes to do it. Come on and let's get this done. All we need is political will, but political will is a renewable resource. Thank you.